The digital context we have highlighted in our previous unit challenges a linear understanding of economic development. We often hear that India is at least 10 years behind China, taking the broad dates of Chinese liberalization as 1978 and for India 1991 or that it will take at least 30 years for India to catch up to where the West is today. The pace of technological change and the impact it is having on business, politics and society should make us question this particular line of thinking. As we have seen, the time period in which a country undergoes its high growth is important. It's unlikely, in fact impossible, that India will follow the same path as countries that have preceded it in terms of development. The India of 2030 or 2050 is not going to be like the US of 2000 or China of 2015. India will have its own development path shaped by its own unique circumstances, not least because of the wider context of the digital age within which India is developing. We'd like to suggest that India is unique for a number of other reasons as well. Historian Ramachandra Guha has made a case for why India is the most interesting country in the world. He suggests that India's size, the scale we've already discussed, plus its amazing diversity, which we'll cover in week three, plus five simultaneous revolutions currently underway, combine to make India the most interesting country in the world. Guha's five revolutions are urban, the change from a rural society to a predominantly urban one. Industrial, the change from an agricultural society to an industrial one. National, the change from colonies and princely states into one nation state. Democratic, the change from a feudal society to a democracy with universal suffrage. And social, with issues like gender, caste and family undergoing great changes. The other important observation Guha makes is that these revolutions are in fact happening simultaneously in India. The West, on the other hand, underwent these revolutions in phases, typically one after the other, over hundreds of years. Take voting, for example, in the United States. In 1776, the founders sounded the alarm for taxation without representation. Women, though, did not gain the right to vote until 1920, and African Americans were still fighting for that right in the 1960s civil rights movement. In India, some of these revolutions took place, or at least began, overnight when India achieved independence from the British in 1947. These revolutions are still underway. India's young population, faster economic growth, and the digital context are changing the pace and direction of them too. Acceleration, if you'll remember, is not just about the change in velocity, but also the direction. Similarly, the digital context is not just making change happen more quickly, but also impacting the trajectory. This course is, in a way, the story of this journey's direction with our thematic approach gradually introducing the relevance of Indian history, belief systems, cultural diversity and creativity to help us better appreciate where India is heading. Next, we'll examine how the digital context is impacting each of Guha's simultaneous revolutions.